Hello, list compilers and accusation deniers, and welcome to my somber reflection on the heavy metal community in the year of 2018. I'm going to start off tonight's program with my absolute favorite releases of the year. And though I will categorize albums in general chunks like that, I try to avoid ranking albums numerically, because all that really does is create an artificial hierarchy between albums that may or may not have a lot in common to begin with. Instead of providing numbers, I'm just going to cough directly into the microphone. <coughs> anyway, here's Hyperdontia's Nephew with Teeth. The word hyperdontia actually refers to the state of having an unusual number of teeth in your mouth. And while I can't attest to the specific number, I do have it on good authority that all four members of this band do in fact have teeth in their mouths. Call it a gimmick, but the fact remains that Nexus of Teeth is a violent and suffocating stroll through brutal death metal territory, accompanied by those sewer water vocals that we all love so very, very much. In the same vein as Hyperdontia, here's Sulfurus, another band with members from Denmark, with their debut album Delectable Dead Gnomes. Whereas Hyperdontia is more similar to the Undegang style of Danish death, Sulfurus should appeal more to fans of Frenolith, though I would imagine that the fan bases of those two bands overlap quite a bit to begin with. Just like Hyperdontia, this album is suffocating and relentless, but Sulfurus has a hint of melancholy to it and feels more poignant in a way. It's like having your throat eaten by someone who's crying. Sure, your throat is still being eaten, but at least there's a meaningful human connection happening at the same time. In an even more similar vein than the vein between the last two releases, we arrive at the aforementioned Frenolith, who actually had a release of their own this year. Ornamented Dead Eyes is a short listen, as it is an EP, but it's worth checking out if you enjoy the band's previous efforts or death metal in general. I was also very fond of the latest output from Deceased, entitled Ghostly White. Ooh, creepy. Deceased is what I would describe as death metal's equivalent to King Diamond. Their albums have a very strong focus on storytelling, the vocals are clean and articulate enough to follow along with, and the riffing style is even straight up influenced by traditional heffy metal, so there are even similarities in the writing of the music itself. Ghostly White is probably Deceased's strongest output yet in terms of composition and plain old interesting riffs, and if it wasn't obvious from the title, Ghostly White, the horror story on this particular album is all about napkins. But enough with the death metal, for the time being. Let's shift gears and take a gander at the Hebrew honeys themselves, those sulfur soul sweethearts in Kavora, making sure to keep the Kabbalah in Canadian black metal. Soul for Soul is an EP, and while I feel it pales in comparison to their full-length Hallelujah, which you may recognize from the Shrek soundtrack, it has that same frighteningly inaccessible religious feeling to it that makes their atmospheric black metal all the more harrowing. What was that, dear viewer? Did somebody say they want more obscure Abrahamic references in their black metal? Well, my friends, you won't need to look any further than Spite's Anti-Moshiak, released on Invictus Productions. This project sounds a lot cleaner than your average black metal release because, just like the aforementioned Deceased, it features a heffy metal style approach to writing the riffs in an extreme metal package. This combination makes Spite similar to, but never derivative of, bands like Mortuary Drape, Grand Belial's Key, and Negative Plane. The one man behind the one man project that is Spite, also featured on the Satan's Lips demo by Impure, which is another promising new black metal project. It sounds a whole lot like Whore of Bethlehem era Archgoat, and should appeal to fans of that real rough and tough black metal flavor offered by Beherit and friends. Gnosis, or Gnosis for competent readers, served up some very well-executed worship of Hellenic black metal, which is how we scholars refer to Greek black metal, because it sounds marginally cooler. The band is from the US, but it's very obvious that they drew inspiration from Greek classics, like Verathron and Rotting Christ. Gnosis is also a very underground band, and as such, they probably don't make a whole lot of money, just like the nation of Greece itself. Now that's dedication. Archgoat had a new album too. If you can muster up enough courage to brave through these blatantly unchristian boobs on display, the Lithuanian Crown offers a more developed and, dare I say, cinematic variety of Archgoat's normally consistent sound. When I say cinematic, I mean it feels more refined and grandiose than, say, the light devouring darkness, which is more like a demon whispering sweet nothings to you through a tin can on a string. 
Another favorite this year was Scorched with Epileptic Butchery, a seizure-inducing death metal celebration of low-budget horror movies and menacing organisms from far beyond the stars. It's groovy, it's grimy, it's good. Check it out, babies and gentlemen. I certainly hope you don't have a daughter named Ung that you threw down the stairs, but if in fact that is the case, I guess you could say that Ung fell. You could also be charged with manslaughter, but legal implications aside, Mouton, Maiton, Pesto Pasta is essentially drunken peasant shenanigans captured in a black metal audio format. Akasha is also a musical representation of drunken debauchery, except these chums are drunk on human blood. Or maybe it's bat menstruation, I don't know, they don't specify. Consuming the soup is extremely aggressive and murky black metal, but with that touch of melodic class that we as a society have come to expect from vampires. Akasha also did a split with a band called Unrest, and be still my beating heart, that might be some of my favorite artwork of the entire year. Content-wise, I prefer the EP, but both releases are well worth your time. Would you like more black metal recommendations? Well, I'm afraid I don't have more black metal, but I do have MAR black metal, a mysterious project released through Fallen Empire and the label's death throes. Unto Lux is a wildly chaotic atmospheric black metal release that's perfect background music, and I do not mean that in an insulting way. It's exactly what it should be, atmospheric, and sometimes you just want to have a howling void encircling your head while you're eating lunch. Fallen Empire also coughed up some hate forest worship in the form of Death Fortress. This band really does feel like an extension of the now defunct Hate Forest project, complete with musical evolutions that just make sense and help Death Fortress become more than just a bunch of no good copycats. Two of the members of Death Fortress are also in a project called Monetary Reimbursement, which also released a full length album this year. If you're a fan of war metal, and I know you are, or at least extremely aggressive and primitive sounding black metal, then you're going to want to be cradled in the gentle arms of the warm god this holiday season. Trust me on that one. Well, what do you know? It's our old friend's Tomb Mold, with their exciting new release. No, not that one, you big goofballs. Manor of Unwashed Forks was a pretty good album, but a big part of this band's magic, at least for me, is the griminess of their production, which just doesn't manifest on their full lengths. Which is why I'm instead giving the gold medal to Cerulean Salivation, which certainly had me salivating from start to finish. I've been meaning to see a doctor about that, actually. One of my overall favorite bands, Mournful Contraception, graced us with a double album very early on in the year, because unreasonably long songs need unreasonably long albums, apparently. On a more serious note, Funeral Doom is one of those genres that's very easy to jump into as a musician, but very difficult to master. And yet, these Australian sweethearts never seem to have a dull moment. The Incubus of Karma is stylistically very much in line with their last two releases, and feels like a natural extension of the Mournful Congregation discography altogether, so I'm satisfied. If one of my favorite bands did end up releasing a bad album, my heart would be ripped to shreds. Speaking of ripped to shreds... This is ripped to shreds. This one-man death metal display is like a big bowl of Swedish death metal with a healthy sprinkling of grindcore mixed in, and it has the advantage of being the only death metal album this year exclusively about dead Chinese people, at least as far as I'm aware. I would tell you the album's title, but these just look like misshapen Chex Mix pieces to me. Candle is a band that really impressed me back in 2016 with their demo. Even though the cover art looks like a low-budget Netflix adaption of Morbid Angel's Covenant, the band has this incredibly cheesy, but at the same time incredibly charming, presence. Their vocalist has a very noticeable accent, but once you get used to it, there's a ton of passion behind their sound, and it's all just so theatrical. I dig it. What's another word for conjuring? Summoning. And with Doom They Come to bring us more synth-heavy, atmospheric, Lord of the Rings-themed black metal. This album took a few listens to properly grow on me personally, but it does have its moments. Okay, all that aside, what's another word for conjuring? Invoking. And here's Chaos Invocation. Invoking Chaos, with their pairing of funky clean vocals and traditional scratchy black metal vocals. Simply put, Chaos Invocation is ritualistic and melodic, and they aren't afraid to get weird. On this album in particular, I hear some Mugwa, some Under the Sign of Hell era Gorgoroth, and some instruments. Rumor has it, that's how they produce these sounds. 
And that would be about it for my absolute favorites of the year. But wait just a second, dear viewer. I haven't bombarded you with the second place sugar cubes just yet. Call them whatever you'd like, be it honorable mentions, runners up, failures to live up to expectations, whatever name you assign them, the point is that these are releases I enjoyed and feel are worth talking about, even though they didn't necessarily blow me away. And what better way to kick off that category than with Visigoth? I absolutely adore The Revenant King, which is the band's first album, so naturally I had high expectations for their sophomore album, which turned out to be this, Conceivable Oats. This was a disappointing listen at first, because I felt it was generic and forgettable. But over time I came around to the first half of songs here. The first five tracks are all at the very least solid performances, and I would even say that the specific song Traitor's Gate is one of the best Visigoth songs overall. However, the last three tracks completely kill the momentum and feel like filler that got tacked on just to increase the album's length. Whether or not that was the case, this is an alright album that could have been a great EP if the fat was trimmed. Demonomancy sounds to me like the band Root if they tried their hand at making death metal. At least that's the impression I get from this specific album. It has an old school feeling to it, maybe some first wave black metal floating around in there, what do we think ladies and gentlemen, along with relatively modern production. I didn't revisit this album often, but I'm still confident in recommending it. Another band that suffered that same phenomenon was Hamtaro. Apparently, someone, somewhere, thought it was a good idea to reboot the anime about hamsters as a Faroese doom metal project, and while I can't say I understand that decision, I sure am glad it was made. My good friend Moomin Macbeth the other day premiered some world-class ancient spells of darkness. The spells in question sound a lot like Perverted Ceremony and Profanatica, so if you get down with that groovy raw black metal sound, give these blokes a go. This album is a tad bit slower than I would have liked it to be, and I just don't find myself as drawn to it as I am towards similar projects, but I do appreciate what Mr. Moomin Macbeth is doing here. Rarely am I one for sludge, but I do make exceptions from time to time. A tone got a toe or two of mine tapping with their bleak and bitter doomfest of an EP titled, you guessed it, A Tone. Or maybe you didn't guess it, maybe you just read the screen since I put the artist and album title right in front of you. Either way, now you know what to look up. A Tone by A Tone. Chapel Flames from Ireland released a promising raw black metal demo this year, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in the future. I would say more about this project, but when I looked it up on the archives and clicked the members tab, it said none, and that freaks me out. So we're moving right along to Gluttony. Gluttony released Cult of the Unborn this year. But it might as well have been called Cult of the Unbored, because I sure wasn't bored with it. Gluttony plays a pretty run-of-the-mill type of Swedish death metal, which is not hard to come by at all these days, but something about this band in particular just clicks so well for me, which is why I felt the need to share them here with you today. And there you have it, folks, the 2018 heffy metal releases that I feel are worth a damn. I'm not going to sit here and rattle off every single release that I felt was at least decent, and sure, there are a few zesty mamacitas floating around that I could have covered, but I believe this video has gone on long enough. I'll include links in the description below whenever possible so you can boogie down with your bad self, but at this point in time, nothing more needs to be said. And yet here I am, still recording. I love... dust.